battery to kind of add a sense of um, realism and control uh, to some real uh, rigid body physics. Okay, so this is assuming a little basic knowledge uh, of some of the rigid body principles. Um, but in the build since I think 2.66 of Blender, um, a lot of the rigid body uh, things have been moved out of the game engine where you had to go and do it all before and then record it to keyframes. You can now do it within the physics tab and there's now the rigid body options here. So I'm just going to play around with these really and record it as we as we have an experiment. Um, so it's not strictly a tutorial but hopefully you'll learn a bit from it as I learn a bit. Um, it's applying some of the principles I would have applied when using the game engine but now because it's all up the front in the in the main interface then it should be a lot easier to use. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this up one blender unit, this, this solid um, cube here. So I'm just going to go G, Z, 1. So it's bang on the floor plane look because it was just one blender unit below the floor. The trick with physics simulations generally in any program is to make things much bigger than you think they need to be. Um, so scale is important. Physics simulations tend to work a lot better when you've got much bigger objects rather than very small objects. Um, so these are kind of going to be like, I'm going to imagine these to be six foot high kind of, um, kind of concrete uh, slabs. But, um, but uh, my idea is to work at a much larger scale than that. Now, Often we're working in blender units, as I've already mentioned, but if you want to work at a particular scale, if you come to your scene settings here, and then you can set it to metric or imperial, um, depending on your preference. So I'm going to work in metric uh, for the sake of it. Um, so I'm looking to make a very tall slab here, and you want to know how high this is. Um, if we come to its dimensions here, it's now 2 meters wide, uh, 2 meters high, and 58 centimeters deep. So I'm going to go a bit bigger than that. So I'm just going to scale this on the X and then I'm going to scale it. In fact, now I'm just going to tab into edit mode, go into face mode, and pull this slab up. And then I'm going to scale it all in edit mode as well. So I'm going to A to select all. Scale it. I'm going to tap out of edit mode. And then I'm just going to come to my front orthographic plane, plane one on my number pad. I'm still in perspective, so I'm going to press 5. G, Z, move it up so it just sits above my floor plane. Now, the trick is with physics is often you don't want, I'm going to put a floor in this, so I don't want anything intersecting with these with this at all, because once it's got physics on it, if you've got two objects crossing over one another or intersecting with one another, they're going to resist each other and thus kind of create a mini explosion, like an atom bomb, matter hitting matter. Um, all right, so let's look at the dimensions of this now. It's saying that it's uh, two meters wide, five meters high, nearly six meters high, and one meter thick. That's a, that's a bit more impressive. Again, importantly with um, physics, once you've done your scaling and you've got your object as you want it, you press then Control A to apply and apply your scale. And that returns all your base line scales to one. Okay, that's important when doing physics simulations. That everything you do, you, once you've adjusted it and scaled it to how you want it, you then apply its scale. Right, I'm just going to then um, duplicate this. So Shift D on the Y. Shift D on the Y. And the idea is I'm going to fire something through these and they're progressively going to uh, adapt their fracturing as, um, as it changes. Okay, um, so let's go file save as before I go any further. I'm going to call this uh, Voronoi test. Go and it's good to save as you go along, especially with physics. So I'm going to add a plane in for my floor plane. Create a plane. In fact, before I create it, I'm going to center my cursor back to the center of the grid. So if I go out, object, snap, 
cursor to center, then create my plane I'm creating from the center of the world, and let's scale that right up. Okay, so I've got a floor that's going to catch any debris, and for these to sit on once they've got physics. Okay, so there's a start. We haven't got any physics into the situation yet, but that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go into cycles because I'm going to ultimately render out in cycles. And if I uh, go to rendered view, you can see what I currently have. Okay, so let's work with this a bit more. So go back to my solid mode. I'm going to create a material for these and I'm going to create two materials. I'm going to create uh, an outside material and then I'm going to create an inner material. Now this is when I fracture my pieces will be able to assign an inner material. So when these fracture they have a different material to the outside as they do into the inside. So to make this really obvious, especially using those, I'm going to make the outer material quite dark and leave this inner material quite bright and they're just diffuse, standard diffuse materials okay uh, and we won't really see that until we come to uh, this here so I'm going to allocate the same thing on these so there's an outer and oh, an outside plus an inner so let's check that on all of them so I want the first material slot to be the outside. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm also going to line up my camera. So I'm going to select my camera, press zero, go lock camera to view. So I can then move it into a kind of an interesting position. There we go. Where we can hopefully see this. Okay, um, so untick that, press save. So we've set up our cycles engine, set up some basic materials. I'm going to put some light in, so I'm going to put some world lighting in. So I'm going to go to world, use nodes. Instead of a colour, I'm going to use a sky texture. So let's go to rendered view. Um, let's think, I'll put the turbidity up a bit, time of day kind of thing. And let's bring this up to full, say, make it a bit brighter. It's just better than having, and then I can move the horizon and sunlight around. This could be an early morning test, late evening test. There we go, I might do it. Light. So we get a bit moody. As long as it's lighting things, it doesn't really matter. Um, and if I come to my sampling, I've currently got my preview to 10, so it's only totting up to 10 samples. But my render, I'm going to put up to 200. So if I was to render a image, get rid of a lot of that noise. The only reason I've put that sky texture in it's just a bit more interesting than putting in um, just putting in a lamp or just putting in a just gives a bit of variation to the lighting. Very exciting scene look. There we go. So let's come out of that. Um, That'll do for me for now, we can amend that all later. So let's go back into our solid view. I'm going to press save again. Now, um, what we're going to do then is we're going to use these as reference points and then we're going to start to dismantle these really. Now if I tab into these, there's not very com much complexity to this mesh at all. So if I was to um, apply like a cell fracture add-on, uh, there's nothing really to work with faces wise, volumes wise, but there are things that we can do an experiment with and we're going to try a few different approaches um, to these okay so and see which works best it's more of a, an exploratory thing so I'm going to go um, 
and just go with the standard uh, user preferences for cell fractures. So if you come to your uh, user preferences and go to add-ons, I'm going to type in cell and tick that. And what you'll get in your tools now is this cell fracture option. So if I select an object, press cell fracture, there's a few different methods in which we can we can do this. Um, so you can go on the your own vertices of this object from the points child vertices, if there was any child vertices within those points, uh, own particles, if we'd add some particles to this object, child particles, so particles from particles, and uh, a grease pencil, so we can actually draw in where we want our destruction. We can also pick random size ones, small ones, big ones, ones that start small close to where the cursor is placed and then dissipate outwards, or start small from as far away from the cursor as possible and then go inwards. Um, recursive shatter, so this is how many times it shatters on top of shatter, okay, uh, and then when we want to clamp the recursion, so by the time we get to 250 recursions, yeah, so it says finish recursion when this number of objects is reached, prevents recursing for extended periods of time, yeah. Um, we can split edges if we wanted to, um, to kind of just burr off the edges. Um, the importantly, this option will recenter all these separate pieces, which is important for physics. This will also tell us we want to put it onto the next layer, so we can pick which layer it goes onto, so we can create our originals and put the new versions that are all shattered onto the next layer along, keeps it tidy. We can look at the progress in real time, and, and you can debug the boolean or debug, create mesh data showing the points used for the fracture. We can also put them into their own group, okay? So let's play around with these and see what happens. So what I'm going to do is just to see what we get out of the standard settings. If we go own verts, let's put this up to, I don't know, 2000. Let's put the noise up to, say, 0.5, which is the kind of randomness of the shape, randomized point distribution. Uh, I'm going to put one recursion in. I'm going to clamp it at yeah, 250, it might work. Just going to make it small. Uh, we're going to not split edges because we want very hard edges. We're going to put them onto the next layer and we're going to put them into their own group called brick pieces. And let's press OK and see what happens. And what we've got, if we go to our next layer, is this fractured object here where we've got it broken up into pieces look and you can see these pieces so that does quite a good starting job of breaking this into pieces okay so that's a start if I come to my groups over here I can see it's created this new group which allows us to select them all which is really handy uh, I'm just gonna delete all those go back to the drawing board. So let's go back to our first layer and let's look at another method. So it said that we could do it based on particles. So even if we haven't got many vertices, so it didn't have much to work with, it only had these points at the corners. Um, so if we were to um, apply a particle system to this, it would base on, on the particles. So if we go new, so I've got particle system, and as you scrub through, which we should see some, if I tab out, see some particles coming out of here, look. But I don't want them to flow like that. So I want to actually emit from the volume. Um, I want them to be no physics, so they just sit there and appear. Look, uh, I'm going to make them start on one and end on one. And I'm going to put their number up to 2,000. So we could go try 5,000. Uh, so what I've got. If I go into wireframe mode, I've got all these particles sitting here which are going to generate the Voronoi structure. So even though my actual mesh itself has only got simplified vertices and is not subdivided at all, let's see what we get. So actually I'm going to take this down to 2,000. Okay, actually let's try 1,000. And we can change the, you know, the kind of faces or volume. Volume seems to be a bit more randomized. We could random it up a bit even more, based on a grid or jittered. OK, 
Okay. Um, so that looks pretty good. And let's see what happens. So uh, let's come out of, well, let's stay in Wi Fi mode. Let's go cell fracture. This time we're going to do it on ohm particles. We're going to stick with the same settings as before. Okay. Just to do a fair comparison. And then we're going to press OK. It's having to do a lot more work this time. So I'll wait for that wheel to catch up because we've got so many particles to draw around. And we can see what happens. So basically what the Voronoi is going to do is going to draw around each one of these particles as a source point. And then conduct a Boolean operation to chip that shape that it's drawn around each dot out of this overall mesh. But you can see from a very simplified mesh by using a particle system, we're getting a lot more um, fracturing. So a particle system is a good way of adding a quick, randomized, extensive, detailed fracturing to an object which is a really simple mesh. So we haven't had to subdivide this mesh at all. We're letting the particles do the subdivision. So it's obviously taking a lot longer because we've got a lot of particles in there, we've got a thousand particles. We've put 2,000 as our source limit for our pieces. Let's just wait for this. And because we're seeing all this in real time because we've said show progress in real time. Okay. So there it is, we're, that is still back to normal, but if we go to our second layer, we now have this very complex uh, mesh on, in a group called brick pieces again. So if it's A to D select, each one of these pieces is a piece in its own right. Okay, So that's a good way of getting a unified um, randomization. So how do we add some physics to this? Well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put my my floor plane, I'm going to move it by pressing M to that second layer. So everything that I want to be physics based is on this second layer and all my references are on my first layer. So what I'm going to do um, is give this some physics. So I'm going to give my plane and I go here and I can either go rigid body or I can come up to the physics tab here and add, add passive. So what this does, if you look at the settings, it makes a passive object but it's still part of the simulation. Okay, So things will react to this, but it won't move itself. It will just stay there until something reacts with it, importantly. Now, I'm going to select one of these pieces so they're active, and then click on the brick pieces group to select the rest of them. And that is important, that one of them is at least selected first, because everything we see up here is going to be the options for that selected piece. This time, I'm going to come to our physics tab and go add active. Okay, uh, and that makes them all active. And then if we just run the simulation by pressing play down here, they all crumble away, look. And what was interesting, I seem to have a dead vertices here. So I don't think that's a physical piece of mesh. You'd get you often get this. Oh no, it is. I take it back. It's not dead vertices at all. It's just a tiny piece of fracture. So here we go. There's our physics. Okay. Now they're all falling with the same mass, even though they're all the same. Um, they're all different sizes. So what we can do is vary the mass. So if we again select one of them, doesn't matter which one, then select the group brick pieces. So one is active. We can calculate the mass of each object. So if we press calculate mass and then we could make it concrete. So if we make that concrete, now what that does before that each mass of each object as created by the cell fracture add-on made each mass of each piece one. Okay. Now we've got that piece that's selected 301 kilos whereas this piece is 171. So it's all based on size to calculate its mass. So now if we run by pressing play, 
we'll get a slightly different reaction with the heavier pieces react differently so if we look through our camera press play smaller pieces react differently to the other pieces now what I'm going to do is come to my um, scene properties at the moment I'm going to up my steps per second to improve um, my physics simulation so I'm going to double that to 120 okay um, and then I'm going to just go back to zero and then I'm going to play this through and re-simulate and it tends to improve the accuracy of our simulation So, that's one way. But again, they're all falling from their own center and gravity. They're all kind of falling in a similar method. We want to make, what if we want to make weak points? Well, there's a few ways of doing this. So let's play with a different uh, scenario this time. I'm going to use the grease pencil. So I am going to just move front on to this object here. I'm going to create a new grease pencil layer here. And what I'm going to do is keep my finger on D so I can draw, and then I'm going to draw where I want my impact zone to be. So just there. Then I'm going to draw with D down. Almost like the particles I had before. Of dissipating as we go outwards. Okay, um, and it's important you draw from an orthographic view for some reason. That's interesting. Ow, oh, rats. I accidentally moved the cursor mid drawing, so I'm going to center my cursor. So our object snap because it was drawing around the cursor basically. So now I come to this view. Let's delete this grease pencil out and start again. D, same again. That's my impact zone. And then dissipates and it gets out. And then go and let's see what happens now so if we go to our tools and let's go I need to reload my cell fracture by the looks of it so if I go user preferences cell there we go take that cell fracture let's go on grease pencil this time let's bring this up to 500. Let's go to 200 here. One here. Um, one split edge. Uh, volume recenter. Next layer. Brick pieces. All pieces even. And let's see what happens now. And there you go, you can see it's actually working out from the center outwards. So if we come here, that's created something a lot more interesting. Look. So now if we were to, um, now because this didn't have much depth, we're getting a slightly different um, subdivision, sorry. Uh, we're not seeing much detail in here, but um, they're kind of fairly large pieces. If we were to come into, um, now let's think, let's select one of these, come up to groups as we did before, and select the rest of the brick pieces. Um, I don't seem to have a plane anymore because it's probably sitting on layer one. So I have to bring that back. Let's go up to our physics tab. 
add active, um, calculate mass, concrete, concrete, concrete. So we're predicting what our mass is going to be, uh, and then what we want to do is bring our plane in, M to move, second layer, and make that passive, and see what we get. So let's run the simulation. And you can see, we get something a lot more interesting, a lot more kind of organic, because we've made weak points. So if I was to come then to come to my scene options and put this up to 120 as I wanted before, uh, let's get a bit more accuracy. That's quite an interesting factor. Now what if I want them to sit there until something impacts with them? Well, I'm going to select a piece, brick pieces, come to the bullet physics or the rigid body physics for that, and I want them to start deactivated and tick these two things. Now, that is only affected this one here. We need to apply it to all the others. To do that, we go copy from the active piece. So press that. And we just need to recalculate the mass because it would have copied the mass as well. So let's calculate mass concrete. Make sure we do that. So now if we simulate, they sit there doing nothing. The reason being is they're waiting, they're deactivated until something hits them. So let's create something. Let's go and create. Let's deselect these. I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to rotate it to RX90. And let's look in the front view, make sure it's lined up with our weak point, which it pretty much is. Let's bring it up a little smidgen. I'm going to scale it down. Again, size is the important thing here. I'm going to tab in, get the end cap, move that out a bit. And I'm just going to create a bit of more of an interesting shape. So I'm going to Extrude scale G Y just to move it out a bit. Extrude scale and extrude Y and then scale that in like that. Let's tab out. It's like the worst bullet ever created, but it's just something that will pierce like hammer through. I'm then going to give this some. Um, some physics, so I'm going to go physics, add active, so it's part of the simulation. But I want to animate it, so I'm going to tick animated so it recognizes any keyframes we give this object. So I am going to put in keyframes of location and rotation. I'm going to bring this back, press I anywhere in here. And then I'm going to go forward to frame 20 say go G Y move that over here and press I so now we should have this animation here also I want it to spin whilst we're doing it so if we go G Y uh, oh no let's get it to its last keyframe I'm just going to come to its rotation value on the Y I'm going to type in I don't know 5000 so now it's rotate and press I, and then it's going to rotate as it goes through there. So now if we simulate, let's come to our view, let's line this camera up a bit better. So if we press save and go Alt A. You can see punches a hole through our weak point and then that falls down according to its mass. Okay, which is quite cool. So let's line up our camera. Now it might be that we want certain ones to stay still. 
to say that this bullet was going really quick. So how do we do that? Well, first off, what we could do is come in, I'm going to press C, and select my outer things I want to not necessarily destroy. Okay, so it might be something like that. This is where we get a bit more creative, say. Yeah. Let's unlock camera from view and let's just get in here. Let's see. We'll see what happens now. What we could do is make them more passive. So we could go add passive. Actually, I'm going to group them as well. So if I go control G and make them part of outside, so I can easily select them if I want. Let's re simulate and see what happens. And now, because these are passive, it's only the active ones in the middle that appear to be affected by this, and because they're trapped in there. So that's where you could get creative with these passive pixels, and you know, you could come in, go C, make the brush a bit bigger, and go Shift click. And actually take out so we only leave some bits left and the rest goes so let's say we're left with basically that base there yeah um, and let's come back see all these out but yeah leave ourselves a, a base say let's have them as passive and then if we invert our selection select inverse actually I selected everything else and that's a thing to do and just make them active and calculate mass concrete and with the one selected let's group them let's go object group add select active group right. yeah there we go so we've got a slightly different reaction again, playing around with our rigid body physics, all running in real time. Now our pieces are a bit thick, aren't they? So before we've done the grease pencil, let's try this on another one. Let's do it on another one using the same method because I thought the grease pencil thing was quite good. I'm going to H to hide that one so it's not in the way. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go and snap my cursor to select it again. Come into this front view, create a new grease pencil layer. I'm going to do the same again. D. Actually, let's go back a step and just have it all radiating around a smaller center area. And then go see what happens this time though, I'm going to actually subdivide it once and just see if that helps so I'm going to go um, tools and let's just tab in and let's, let's just subdivide it once and see what that does it's all of an experiment really with that selected then go cell fracture grease pencil 500 pieces, clamp recursion of 200. I might try and yeah, let's stick with the same we've had before. Do, 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 do. Brick pieces 002. Press OK. Some 
something similar again. I think we've got a better destruction in the middle. would be ideal no let's just check that let's undo so I'm just going to go experiment again worth experiment with this had an entrance point and an exit point with this grease pencil so I'm going to delete this grease pencil out instead of drawing around the cursor I'm going to draw from view or oh, actually let's try surface so let's go D like that and go side view and toggle around to the back. I'm going to select this one to hide it. To hide the right one. Yep. And let's just go side view and then toggle around a couple of increments. Then I'm going to draw on this side roughly the same thing. I don't want to keep exactly the same. see what we get. There we go, so we've got it on both surfaces. Now if we were to go to I've right, still got one subdivision. Let's go to cell fracture, grease pencil, source limit 500, let's go 215 there. Let's just do a like for like comparison. Next layer, press OK. Yeah, that's looking slightly different now. So it seems that if we draw on the surface with our grease pencil on either side, we're going to get a more interesting, more interesting result by the looks of it. A more dense-like result. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, so again, select one of them. Brick pieces two, which is this one. Uh, let's go to the physics tab. Add active and let's de enable deactivation. Copy from active and then we'll calculate mass on concrete and we'll play. Obviously, we've got some passive ones in there. So let's go back through that again. quite nicely. So we've got some smaller bits in that one. Obviously these cell fracture counts are pretty low, they're all 500s. If we put it up to thousands we get a lot more, much denser approach. So what I'm going to do is just do a like for like comparison. If you command Z that or delete dick pre uh, brick pieces too. Come back to our first one here and redo it but we're going to add some more pieces to our simulation to create cell fracture. I'm going to put this up to 2000 this time. Uh, yeah, let's leave that the same. Grease pencil. Next layer. Okay. This time I'm going to, because remember we had two material slots. So this time, what this does is we can say, right, the inner material, make it the next slot along, which if, in this case, that's the first slot, the next slot along is that one. So let's go in, make it one stop ahead, make this 2,000 particles again. Uh, oh, noise is on. Needs to be 0.5. And uh, let's see what we get uh, now.
Seems to be doing a lot more work breaking up <coughs> nice pieces around the middle. So it's come to this stage. Uh, that looks a lot more, a lot more interesting. So again, one of these selected. Okay, and then select all brick pieces too. So let's come to the physics tab. Add active. Uh, let's make sure start deactivated. Uh, copy from active, then we'll calculate the mass of them all as concrete. So then if we were to simulate now, yeah, that's better. We've got some smaller pieces in there as well. So that higher count is working to create a bit more variation as it comes through. Look, uh, and if you want, if we just get these pieces out now, look, look through our camera then we should see that our piece has an outer material and then an inner material whereas before they just had all one material because we didn't allocate it when we self fractured that one but this one we've got like an inner material okay so that works quite nicely um, <coughs> so let's just experiment again one more go let's see what we can do um, Let's see if we can get. Let's just ramp up the amount of pieces. So I'm going to bring all my scenes back, switch these back on, get this last one. I'm going to turn that one off and turn that one off. Leave this one. And new grease pencil again. I'm going to just go on surface. So D. Let's draw. Concentrated around this area here. Yep, side view. Let's toggle around a couple of times. Let's draw a similar kind of shape here. And see where that takes us. <coughs> Tools, cell fracture. Let's put it up to say 5,000. Uh, grease pencil again, small, and cut recursions, 250, let's go. 300, uh, yeah, apply the next material along to the inner, like we did last time. Let's make this brick pieces three, and then press OK. We can start to see, it producing its results starting to break up that mesh. Again, a mesh that is only, well this one is not even subdivided. So we haven't even subdivided this mesh. So it'll be interesting to see what results it gives us based on the grease pencil. So this is a mesh that we haven't subdivided at all. We're just using the cell, cell fracture tool to break up that, to break up that mesh into pieces using the grease pencil as a reference point. And there we go. So it looks like fairly similar results. So again, select one of them and select all the things in brick pieces three. Come to physics, add active, enable deactivation, start deactivated, copy from active, calculate mass, concrete, and then what we've got is something into that so it goes bang 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 I think what we find is the best combination is using the grease pencil to define where you want things to be on either side of the surface but I find this is probably the most detailed even though this had a 2,000 pieces whereas this had 500 because this had no subdivisions it's still fairly um, blocky and uniform whereas if I think we'd gone for a combination of subdivision and more pieces as well as the grease pencil I think that is your best solution so I think it's this option plus more particles or more fractures 
and you're going to get your best option. So if we come to rendered image, let's see what that looks like. See, we've got quite an interesting look to this whole thing. We can see we've got different pieces breaking up. And the next thing to do is to be add a smoke uh, element to this. So if I stop that, I'm going to come out. And when does everything finish? They all stop at about. Let's get all of our bullet actually. Let's make it as keyframes. Let's make it go way off into the distance. So if I was to remove that keyframe, GY, and bring that all over there, so it go much quicker. And go I. It's now going at some lick through there. In fact, it might even be going too quick <laughs> to have a reaction on these, it seems. So that's an interesting factor. It's actually going through that now so quick. It's having a delayed reaction. So uh, let's bring that back a bit. Well, let's keep that where it is, but come to the dope sheet select and then just box select all the keyframes to do those end keyframes and move them along a bit so it takes longer by pressing G for that process to happen so now if we were to play back now come back to our timeline press play there we go we have something that works. So all that's left to do is to add a bit of motion blur on this and render it out. So I'm going to get my samples up, add a bit of motion blur. I'm going to get it up to 100%. And finishes on frame 55. So I'm only going to frame five, and then I'll render it out as an animation. So that's it. That was a little experiment looking at the Voronoi uh, fracturing and the new rigid body tools inside Blender and looking at a few variations.